Yo, 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 yo. What's going on, guys? So great to see you. Hey, so I've heard about this in the past. It was um, this, um, he was a Marvel superhero. Marvel um, superhero? Named Bass Reeves. He was the first black deputy marshal of the West. Really? The first black deputy marshal of the West. Wow, that's interesting. Was a slave. Cowboy. Was a slave. I think either he and he escaped from slavery. I don't know if he he had to be escaped from he had to escape from slavery. And um, I don't know if he ended up in Mississippi and went before he passed. Or but he it said the first of the West. So I don't know where out west they're talking about. Why don't you find out about this, honey? Um, we were watching uh, maybe Hidden Colors. Oh, that's right. And they talked about him. They sure did. Yeah. Okay. Colors, 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 colors. colors. What's up, Mark? Fool. Colors. Now that's not even that how you talk. That song was colors. hard, though. Yeah, colors, colors was hard. Colors. Okay. Roger McGrath for some twenty years. He's been a longtime historian at UCLA. He's also taught at other California schools. He is an expert among many areas, including the Old West. I thought we talked to Roger McGrath about a man named Bass Reeves. You up? I'm Bass up. Reeves Rested. was a deputy U.S. Rested. marshal sure that Rested. operated uh, first and for most of his career out of the Western District Court of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Arkansas. And often he would set up a camp several miles from the location where he suspected, and then Bass Reeves would dress as some kind of tramp on the road. Tramp. Most of his arrests came about because of that. And he brought in uh, hundreds and brought them back to be tried before the hanging judge, tramp. Isaac Parker. Bass Reeves is a figure that most people don't know about, or to the extent that they do know about him, know the wrong things. I give you historian Roger McGrath. Roger, tell us who was Bass Reeves? Yeah, thank you, Larry. Uh, Bass Reeves was a deputy U.S. marshal uh, that operated uh, first and for most of his career out of the Western District Court of Fort Smith, Arkansas, uh, with its judge, the famous hanging judge, hanging Isaac judge. Parker. Um, and he did most of his work in what would today be Eastern Oklahoma, in those days, Indian Territory. And that's specifically why he was assigned that area, because uh, during the Civil War, he had uh, left his owner, uh, Colonel George Reeves, in the Confederate uh, uh, cavalry, who was fighting in Arkansas, the Battle of Pea Ridge and elsewhere. And when he heard about the Emancipation Proclamation, Bass Reeves took off. <laughs> Not that he had it really bad, I mean, considering slavery, it's an odd thing to say, but his family had been household servants for the Reeves family mm. and the original patriarch, William Reeves. Mm. And uh, they had it relatively good. For example, uh, Bass Reeves himself, his, uh, the eldest son kind of took him under his wing. This is George Reeves, and he taught him to shoot firearms, uh, ah. pistols and rifles. And he trained him until he was an expert. And Bass Reeves started shooting when he was eight years old. Wow. Started shooting. I think it's unusual, he was a slave. But yet, and he was taught horsemanship um, and, and all sorts of things. And then he went off as an aide to Colonel George Reeves during the Civil War. But at one point, and we don't know exactly when or under what circumstances, although there's been a lot of stories told about it, but he drifted off. And he drifted off into Indian Territory. Okay. And there he spent the last two years of the Civil War before he returned to uh, Texas uh, and then eventually uh, bought his own farm in Van Buren, Arkansas. So why did I say wits? And while he was there, since he had lived with the Indians in Indian Territory, when uh, marshals had to go into Indian Territory, oh. they would hire guides. West of the Mississippi. I keep saying west, but it's west of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Mississippi. Okay. Mississippi. Sip. Who knew the languages there? Uh, and, and for the most part, it was either Muscogean or Iroquoian 
uh, language. The Cherokee spoke in the Iroquoian language, and the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Seminole, and Creeks spoke a Muscogean uh, language. Okay. And Bass Reeves knew them both. So he hired himself out to these marshals, and he would, uh, for years, he, he went out there and aided them, uh, not only guiding them, but interpreting for them. Well, then when this Western District Court had a new judge appointed, this was Isaac Parker, uh, the former judge, the original judge was William Story. He was ineffective and in fact corrupt. Mm. Um, and Isaac Parker came in to clean up things. And the first thing he did was hire all these new deputy U.S. Marshals. In fact, he first he hired the chief U.S. Marshal, a guy named James uh, Fagan. And then Fagan hired 200 deputies who would work underneath him. And among these were several black deputies. Mm. And although people say, well, the first black deputy west of the Mississippi was Bass Reeves. No, actually there were several. Mm. But he became the most prominent and the most successful. Um, so he, he does have that distinction to be sure. That's nice. Well, uh, Bass nice. Reeves then was a natural. That's not like a shirt. Nice. Well, yeah, he said he was the most prominent out of all of the uh, black deputies that came before him. So they were nice. Went, like it was just it's convenient. That was very no, that convenient. was. I know what I mean when I say that's, so, that's nice. nice. That's yeah, that's nice. great. That's, that's wonderful. Nice. That's something to notice and recognize. You Did your son buy you that? That is so nice. For going into Indian territory, which was part of the jurisdiction of this Western District Court. For the first seven years, he was a possiman. And this meant that there was one head deputy U.S. Marshal, and then he would take uh, one, two, three posse men with him on uh, a trek to serve warrants or run down some uh, fugitive posse. in Indian territory. After seven years, Bass Reeves, again, his apprenticeship as a posse man uh, was so effective, so successful, he demonstrated such uh, leadership and courage that then he took the lead role. And he continued in that lead role for another 25 years, 32 years altogether, 25 years as a lead U.S. Deputy Marshal. And he brought in uh, hundreds, although some people say thousands, but it's not possible. But he did bring in hundreds, uh, had served warrants and arrested hundreds, and brought them back to be tried before the hanging judge, Isaac Parker. And Isaac Parker's reputation was well earned. A few months after he was appointed to that job, uh, he put six convicted men on the scaffold and they were uh, hanged all together at once. It was almost like some festive occasion. Thousands of people had gathered for this hanging. So that established his reputation. And one of the deputies consistently bringing in these men sometimes for petty things, uh, sometimes for domestic violence, sometimes for horse theft, many times for whiskey running. Mm. Booze. Uh, but sometimes for murder was Bass Reeves. And not only did James Fagan consider him one of his best deputy U.S. Marshals, but so did Isaac Parker. Now, um, you said that he brought in people for a range of offenses, uh, including murder. Uh, I think I read, if not from you somewhere, that uh, these bad guys would go into the Indian Territory because it was lawless, and generally speaking, they're less likely to be captured. That's why they went there. Uh, but upon hearing that Bass Reeves is after you, some of these really bad guys would just throw up their hands and surrender. Is that, mm. is that true? Well not quite throw up their hands and surrender, uh, but they greatly feared him because he was so effective. I mean, they they would leave notes for each other. Uh, there, there was a warrant for the arrest of, uh, it, it, it may be Jim uh, Webb, it may be Tom Story, um, some other 
outlaw that was wanted for a capital crime. Hmm. And they knew that Bass Reeves was on their trail and they pinned notes to trees, you know. It was almost, ah, oh, can't catch me. And uh, there was a cat and mouse game that went on. And, and ba uh, Bass Reeves would usually have a cook with him and a posse, posse man or two. Uh, and often he would set up camp uh, several miles from a location where he suspected uh, the fugitive he was on the trail of um, was located. And then Bass Reeves would uh, dress as uh, some kind of tramp on the road, Tramps. looking Tramps. for a handout from a farmhouse. Oh, I'll chop wood uh, for breakfast. Wonder why they use that verbiage. Why don't you just say it as like a homeless person? Because tramp sounds like whore. I know, and I was thinking he would dress trampish. I was like, what does that mean? Like you put a wig on or something. opposite. But you look like you're not even all the way in the camera. If you look at that little bitty screen down there. Your mic is barely in compared to my my view. One shoulder. It's ma'am. Whatever. And uh, so he would, he would adopt this uh, role as uh, some kind of traveler down on his luck, sometime, sometimes a drifter, uh, sometimes a criminal on the lam. And most of his arrests came about because of that. Mm. He would uh, ingratiate himself with somebody in the neighborhood um, and he would Just allay their stuff. suspicions by virtue of his dress, by virtue of the fact that he knew the Indian languages. I remember much of the time he was dealing with Indians or uh, what they might call That's biracial fire. today, uh, back then half breeds or something, quarter breeds, half breeds, because quarter his character breeds, was- breeds. So he must have had mixed kids with the Indians. Like if he was that prominent, he probably had mixed black Indian children. Could have. But he knew a lot of the languages. That's pretty dope. That's what I'm saying. If you were that intertwined, you probably, you know, all the way in. Could. But I was just thinking back when he said the, the slave master taught him how to use the gun and he was at he was eight. The, the slave master never thought that he we could shoot up, shoot up the place and be free. Um, it was no need to. They had it good as slaves. I mean, you know, not saying that, you know, the term is bad, but they had it. You know, not everybody was treated horribly in their plantation or in the house. He was, his family was in the house. So they were treated okay. well. Right. Full of Indians. It was uh, of full of whites. I, allegedly. And a good number of blacks as well. And these five civilized tribes, the Seminole, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creeks, and Cherokee, owned thousands of black slaves. See? And the black mm -hmm. slaves were not free there until 1866. And you mm -hmm. say, wait, there's a 13th Amendment. And I've noticed that even yes. that most people that are historians, not that historians to a level that we've met, they didn't know that right. this is new information. Yeah. Over 1865, what's going on here? Well, the Indians said the Constitution doesn't apply to us, doesn't affect our slaves. Mm. So the U.S. government had to negotiate separate treaties with each of these tribes to get them to free their black slaves. Wow. Well, this meant after 1866, you had thousands of blacks in the, in the area, resident in Indian territory. And then, of course, you had some mixed race of all sorts of white, Indian, black in this, this area. Well, Bass Reeves was one that could, could move easily among all these people. He, so had, he had cool. lived there uh, for the last two years of the Civil War. Uh, and this is how he proved the most effective. Where some hot shot, tough, honorary, good shot, white deputy U.S. Marshal couldn't do this. He would stick out like a sore thumb and would be unable to communicate directly uh, with the people that lived among these five civilized tribes there in that area of Indian Territory. Bass Reeves could do it. So a lot of it was not so much upfront confrontation, although sometimes it eventually came to that. But often he would make these arrests 
I'll give you one typical example that he wound up uh, getting fed breakfast. And there's typical on the frontier everywhere. Cattle ranches, farms, anything. You were tramping on the road and you came up and and asked for breakfast and, and they invite you in. It was just an American tradition. Feed you breakfast. And then usually it was your duty to go out and chop some wood or do something before you moved on down the road. Well, at this location where he thought the mother was uh, hiding her two sons who were on the lamb, warrants were out for them, uh, he came up to this house and the mother cooked him breakfast and he was able to ingratiate himself with her because of his manner, his, his uh, tattered clothes and uh, his familiarity with all the local customs, everything. Well, then when she relaxed, completely uh, relaxed, she stepped out into the yard in front of the cabin and let out a low whistle. Mm -hmm. And some low whistles came back in reply. Mm -hmm. Do a whistle. A whistle. Come on, boys, it's safe in here. <laughs> in other words, it was safe now. Come on home, boys. Oh, wow. And these two outlaws I came did. in, sat down with Bass Reeves, and uh, chatted it up like old friends. And Bass Reeves slowly let on that he was on the lamb also. The lamb. And they had no reason to disbelieve him because he fit in so perfectly. Mm. Well, that night, when they all went to sleep, and the two outlaw sons and Bass Reeves together on cots and in one room in the cabin, and these two outlaws went sound asleep, snoring. Bass Reeves <laughs> quietly got up, handcuffed them both, <laughs> and uh, early in the morning left uh, with wow. them, and he was uh, marching them back to the, his camp, which was seven miles away, and the mother marched right behind him, cussing up a blue streak all the way. Mm -mm. Was he ever was he ever shot at? Was he ever hit? Oh. <laughs> now, all right, the funny part of thinking of that, imagine for seven miles, somebody back there, maybe about 10 feet, cussing at you. And then they, could you imagine in between times they would run out of cuss words they had nothing to say? Huh, huh. Start throwing stuff at you. That's messed like, up. Just how many cuss words you got for seven miles? Who gonna walk seven miles behind Bass Reeves? And how many? I'm, I'm just saying. Imagine not the too much cussing time. I it, can't it didn't imagine. last. <laughs> yeah, ba Bass Reeves uh, shot at plenty of times, and I mentioned earlier Jim Webb, and this was I, I think Bass Reeves' best a uh, gunfight. Uh, he had tracked down Jim Webb, and there's a long story behind this. But uh, and they started shooting each other from some distance, uh, perhaps half a football field, 50 yards or, or more, uh, maybe even 100 yards. And uh, Jim Webb's shots narrowly missed killing Bass Reeves. One bullet went through. Bass Reeves hat. Wow. Another uh, bullet took off part of his collar. Mm -hmm. Another bullet knocked a button off his coat. Wow. And uh, yeah, yeah, and and so forth. He, he was almost riddled with bullets, but they didn't strike him. They striked uh, something on his body or some accoutrement that was there. And uh, mm -hmm. two of Bass Reeves' shots caught uh, caught Jim Webb, and uh, Jim Webb was mortally wounded. Mm. But before he died, he said, and they'd been, they'd been um, kind of adversaries for a couple of years. Jim Reed had been arrested by Bass Reeves, and then um, Jim Webb jumped his bail. So this has been going on for a couple of years. Uh, but Jim Webb harbored no ill feelings. It was like a just an honorable shootout among worthy opponents. And and he told Bass Reeves, he said, Yeah, I, I thought I was gonna get you, but I gotta admit, you took me out, you know. <laughs>
and he died. <laughs> Roger, um, we- what? That's some Wild West stuff right there. A minute. You had me. And then you just next know they got the X over their eyes like this. So is that how Mass Reeves died? I thought he was talking about the other guy who Oh, killed. wait a minute. Go back. I thought I was like, no, he can't die like that. Go back. I must have missed something. No, he can't die like that. He had to go out like a champ. Took off part of his collar. Who's collar? Another bullet Passes. knocked a button off him. his coat. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and so forth. He, he was almost riddled with bullets, but they didn't strike him. They strike uh, something on his body or some accoutrement that was there. And uh, two of Bass Reeves' shots caught, uh, caught Jim Webb. Okay. And uh, Jim Webb was mortally wounded, mm. but before he died, he said, and they'd been, they'd been um, kind of adversaries for a couple of years. Jim Reed had been arrested by Bass Reeves, and then um, Jim Webb jumped his bail. So this has been going on for a couple of years. Wow. Uh, but Jim Webb harbored no ill feelings. It was like a just an honorable shootout among worthy opponents. And and he told Bass Reeves, he said, yeah, I, I thought I was going to get you, but I got to admit, you took me out, you know. <laughs> and he died. <laughs> Roger, um, when wow. Quentin Tarantino made Django, I heard him say, I made this film because I wanted to give black people uh, a hero from that era. Mm. And it just drove me nuts because there were lots of black heroes of that era, Mm. one of whom is the man we're talking about, Bass Reeves. Why is it that there hasn't been a real movie, a serious movie about this man? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I was was thinking about this when when you talked about... But I thought... That's good. Didn't uh, Mario Van Peebles do Posse? I remember Posse. Yeah, he did Posse, but I mean. But see, that's why he said that there were several black deputies before or during Bass Reeves' time, but he was the most prominent. So he black was the, with blickies. He was the baddest brother out of all the brothers. During this interview, that perhaps a problem now, today, especially a modern day uh, Bass Reeves, maybe somebody like. Milwaukee County Sheriff or former Sheriff David Clark. <laughs> so I'm not sure if uh, all the cultural Marxist, politically correct, Black Lives Matter, all those kind of things, um, think very highly of David Clark. But that was a Bass Reeves type of guy. Bass Reeves was David Clark. absolutely law and order. He was absolutely upright. Honest. Let's go. Uh, and he had an outstanding reputation among whites and, and blacks equally. Mm. 